Today I want us to look at what did Jesus come to do? What did he come to do? Fine, he came. Mm -hmm. To do what? You know who he is. He's a son of God, right? Jesus is the expression of God's grace. What else is Jesus? Jesus is the gospel. Jesus is the fulfillment of the law. Jesus is the word of God. Jesus is the Lord of heaven and earth. Uh -huh. Jesus is the eternal high priest. He's a high priest that is forever. He's a high priest that is eternal. Eternal. A high priest forever. So today I want us to look at what did he come to do? What did he come? What did he come to do? So Jesus came to do several things. But before I let you know what Jesus came to do, it's good I first let you know what Jesus did not come to do. And it's just one reason. Jesus did not come to die as a martyr. In fact, Jesus is not a martyr. Repeat after me. Jesus, Jesus. is not a martyr. A martyr is one who, who, who dies for what he believes. A martyr is one who dies for what he believes. But Jesus did not die for what he believes. Jesus was a sacrifice. Jesus was... In fact, he says that no man can take my life. I give it willingly. So nobody killed Jesus. Because his life, you can't kill life. Jesus willingly gave his life for our sake. So Jesus is not like Stephen. Stephen was a martyr. He died for what he believed. But Jesus is not a martyr. Jesus is a sacrifice. Repeat after me, Jesus is not a martyr. He is a sacrifice. He is what? Jesus is what? A sacrifice. Jesus is a sacrifice. Jesus is? Jesus is a sacrifice. Jesus is a sacrifice. No one takes it from me. But I laid down. Let's start from verse 17. John 10, 17. It's just the previous verse. Who is there? Who is there? Is that in the room? No, 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 you don't train with me. You don't train with me, eh? You train with anyone else, not me. So, you don't train during a, a real match. Do you train during a real match? No, no, you find other matches. Eh? You use PS. Eh? Eh? That is Stephen. Oh, is Njeru what given? It's not Njeru was there. You had given him. What's the name? Eh? Andun Derito. You're doing a good job, but first train, eh? Wacha kwenda, wacha kwenda UEFA. Maeriwa. Oeniwa Kenya Premier League. Kario Bangi Sharks. You'll embarrass yourself for. No reason. First play in your league. And then when you, once you're competent, they can now recruit you. Sindio? Mm. Yeah. You're doing a good job. I appreciate. Clap for yourself. Thank you. <laughs> the Bible says, Therefore, my father loves me because I lay down my life that I may take it again. I lay down my life. Nobody kills me. I decide to die. I'm a sacrifice. I'm not a martyr. Martyrs don't lay down their life. Martyrs, their life is snatched from them. <laughs> People kill them for what they believe. Stephen was stoned to death. He was stoned to death. <clears throat> he had no option. But for Jesus, he would have decided, even if you put me here for 10 hours, I will not die. Because his life, I will not even bleed. He is God. Are you together? Yes. But he allowed everything that happened because of, because of what I'll show you to accomplish some things. 
So Jesus is a sacrifice. Jesus is? Sacrifice. Verse 18. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it. Like I have power to choose to die, and I have power to choose to resurrect. I can kill myself and resurrect myself. <laughs> Jesus is something else, I'm telling you. He can kill himself, or he can allow you to kill him and resurrect himself. He laid down his life. That's why he's not a martyr. And he says, this command I have received from my father. So the father told him, I know you cannot be killed. You're unkillable. Antikua. Antikokua. But I would want to you to do me one favor. Allow them to kill you. Then resurrect yourself. Put it down, then take it. Because I know you can't be killed. Your life. I have come that you may have life and have life in abundance. So who is life? Christ, Jesus. You can't kill life. It's like those kids. I don't know if they've seen that car video that goes around. It's a meme. Those kids who are they are told by their mother to sit down. And they're usually two seats. Then they, they know how to do the 180 thing. Then they go down, they go down. They refuse, the father removed the seats. And instead of them sitting, like in, instead of the mother bringing back the seat, they decide to, to harass the mother. So instead of them sitting, they go down. You've not seen that video? All of you look like you've not. Okay, I'll find it. So they, they harass the mother. They refuse to sit. They do 180. The mother says, sit. They refuse. They do 180. So they keep on pulling the seats. The mother gets angry because they know how to do 180. So that's Jesus. He, he can't be killed. But the father tells him, because I know you can't be killed, for the sake of these guys, lay down your life. So Jesus did not come to die as a martyr. He did not come to die as? Jesus is a sacrifice. He is the lamb that takes away the sin of the world and he is the innocent lamb of God. He is the innocent, the righteous lamb of God. Are we together? Behold the lamb of God. Behold the lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. He is a sacrifice. So number one, what did Jesus come to do? Number uno, Jesus came to give us eternal life. And this is the testimony. He that has a son. And this is the testimony. He that has the son has eternal life. First John. And this is the testimony. Jesus came to give us eternal life. Tell us about Jesus came to give you and me eternal life. I was expecting that scripture to be up by now. This is the testimony. He that has the son has eternal life. This is the testimony. Is it first John chapter what? Eh? Help the guy, maybe he doesn't know. First John? I showed you on Sunday. 5.11. First John 5.11 or 12. Were you not in the service, my guy? Or oh, the machine? Eh? You had forgotten? I know. And this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life. And this life is in his son. So he that has the son, has it, continue. He who has the son has life. And he who does not have the son does not have life. So Jesus came to give us eternal life. What is eternal life? Eternal life is the life of God. Life of God. That's eternal life. Eternal life is the life of that means life with no end. So when does eternal life begin? By the day you receive Christ. You don't, you don't get eternal life when you die. You get eternal life the day you receive Because he came to do what? To give you eternal life. So the day you accept him as your Lord and Savior, you begin to live eternally. So when you have the physical death, you just move from one life to another. You move from the natural life to the life that is already living in you, which is eternal life. The natural life, that is man kind of life, and then we have plant life, and we have eternal life. Plant life is the life of plants. Animal life is the life of animals. Human life is the life of human beings. Then eternal life is the life of God. Plant life is the life of plants. Animal life is the life of animals. 
Human life is the life of human beings. And eternal life is the life of God. So Christ came to give you eternal life. And do you know why he gives you eternal life? Because you are created in the image of Christ. In the image and the likeness of God. An image is a picture. When you see a picture, it is always the same as the original, right? As the person. So when people see you, they see God. Because you are created in the image and the likeness of and I spoke about that, I told you, your spirit, not your physical body. You are? Spirit. Your spirit has the same attributes. But because of sin, the, part, the life that was in the spirit, the eternal life, died. You understand? Because the wages of sin is? So you died. So Christ came to recreate you. A Christian is not, someone who is born again is not re remodeled. He's not re renovated. He is he's not restructured. He is recreated. He is remade. The old man is destroyed and a new building is put up. A fresh and new. That's the first thing that Christ came to do. The second thing Christ came to do, he came, us to, make, he came to make us sons of God. Christ came to make us sons of God. And that's what I want to dwell on this night. He came to make us sons. Tell everybody you are a son of God. So Jesus does not want us to be religious human beings. Jesus wants us to be sons of God. Jesus is not interested in you behaving piously. You know a pious person? Bwana sifiwe Mungu awe nanyi Mbarikiwe Shalom. Shalom. The response of shalom is actually my shalom. Is it usually by another? By another is just what we say. But the response of shalom is shalom. Our, our version is marnada. But the response of shalom is shalom. Because shalom means peace. Marnada means the Lord is coming soon. So someone tells you peace. You tell him marnada. The Lord is coming soon. Jesus did not, did not come to make us that. It's, that's good. There's nothing wrong with such greetings, by the way. In fact, I should be greeting you, Shalom. Because it means the peace of God be with you. Peace be with you. The peace of God. Jesus actually spoke to his disciples and says, Shalom. My peace I live with you. Shalom. Nonetheless, Jesus did not come to make us religious. He came to make us sons of... Tell about Jesus, Jesus came to make us sons of God. First John 3. First John 3. What manner of love? Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called children of God. Let's use the King James. By the way, King James is the, script, is the Bible that is closest to the original translation. Just that now it doesn't use the modern English. Yeah. And the one that is modern and almost like the original is NIV. NIV. NIV uses this, the sentence structure type of translation where they try and make the sentence like the original one. King James does not use the sentence structure. It mirrors the original one. That's why some things that K KJV says that does not make sense in English. They don't, they're not grammatically sound, but NIV is grammatically sound because they use sentence structure translation. NLT uses the modern English. So some things NLT say may not be in the original translation or they may lose some meaning from the original because the original Bible was written in Hebrew and Greek. That's the original one. You understand? So everything else was translated from those two languages. And there are some words that are found in Hebrew that are not found in English. For example, there are words in Kikuyu that are not in Kiswahili. Like Motina. <laughs> what is the Kiswahili word for Motina? There is no. Motina is a dog, a stray dog. Humbo <laughs> Koko. 
You see, that means something different. It is close, but not literal translation. Did you understand what I said? Yes. And there are others, even in your language. There are some words in your language that are not in English, right? Like what? Like wekesa. What is wekesa in English? Wekesa means literally harvest. Wekesa? I doubt, but yeah. It's harvest, but I doubt if it's directly translated to mean that. Maybe that is what is inferred, but not direct translation. Anyway, you understand my point, yeah? Yes. So that's why the, you sh sometimes you may not be able to use King James to do Bible study, but always make reference to King James so that you don't miss. Because this one is, they translated it almost as it was, even if it doesn't make sense, it, like grammatical sense. Which thou doest, do now. Or doeth, doeth quickly. Thou which doest, doeth quickly. <laughs> Grammatically, what is that? But that is exactly what he said. That which you want to do, do it now. That's what NLT will say. Did you understand? Yes. Anyway, now let's go there. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of you see, New King James says children. Yeah. But God doesn't, all of us are children of God. But not all of us are sons of God. You understand? Yes. He came to make us sons, but we were still children. We were his people. But when he came, he gave us the right. As many as believed him, he gave them the right to be called the sons. Can you imagine? You are a son by right. That's why you are chosen. You are accepted. You are adopted. You've been adopted by rights. That's why you are a core heir with Christ Jesus. What Christ has, you have. What Christ experiences, you will have to experience. Because you are a core heir. Core heir. <laughs> Today I don't think you are ready for me. <laughs> For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom you cry out, I'm a father. Spirit of adoption. So go back to first John. He, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knows us not because it knew him not. Continue. Behold, now we are the sons of God and it doeth not, not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when, this, when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Verse 3. And every man that hath hope in him purified himself, even as he is. Pure. Now, New Living Translation. Translate. From verse 1. So now you, are, you already know that you've been made sons. Isn't you? Uh, so now let's read. Uh -huh. See how very much our father loves us. For he calls us his children. And that is what we are. But people who belong to this world don't recognize that we are God's children. Because you don't know. So children is not the same as sons. Are we together? Yes. Everybody in the world is a child of God. But not everybody is a son. Sons are those who received him. Therefore he gave them the right to be called sons. But every human being is a child of God because they are created in the image and the likeness. Yes, whether born again or not. But those who received him and they were born again, what did they receive? A right to be called sons. They received a spirit of adoption. And that spirit cries, Abba Father. The spirit of an unbeliever cannot cry, Abba Father. It cries God. It says, Oh God. But you call him Father. That's the difference. Creator and Father is different. Are we together? Creator is owner. Owner, right? But Father is personal. Father is from you I come forth, the giver of my life. That's Father. So Christ came to make us sons of God. Continue. 
Dear friends, we are already gods, we are already sons, but we have not yet we are, he has not yet shown us what we'll be like when Christ appears. But we do know that we'll be like him, for we shall see him as he really is. Why? Because he made us sons, because he's also a son. So I am like him. But you are yet to see the full manifestation of who I am, because Christ is yet to appear. But I know when he comes, I'll be like him, because he's my firstborn. I'm the secondborn. You get my point? Like he's the firstborn of all creation. So I'll be glorified with him. Are we together? This is what I was talking to you about glorification. Remember justification, sanctification, ongoing, then glorification. That's what he's talking about. I'll be glorified. I'll just be like him. Exactly like him. What he is, is what I'll be. He dominates, I dominate. He rules, I rule. He subdues, I subdue. Are we together? So Christ came to make us sons of God. Now the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Now Christ is a son of God. Right? And the Bible says not only is he a son of God, he is the firstborn of all creation. That means he is the pattern of all sons. Sindio? Nane potea? Let me repeat. Christ is the son of God. He is the firstborn. Sour. And it is by him that I have the right to be called a son. Are we together? So Christ is the example or the pattern of how all sons of God look like. Right? All sons of God look like who? So everybody who is a son has the image of who? Of Jesus. That's what Colossians says. You have the image of Christ. Colossians, I think, 2 9. Or 1 9. 2 9 or 1. Yeah, 1 15. Thank you. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all. He is the image. Go to Colossians 2 9. Let me see what 2 9 says. For your name dwells. No. Verse 8. This one means something different. Ah, anyway, you'll get it. One nine. Ah, but it says you have the image of God. It is in Colossians. I've forgotten where. One fifteen. Yeah, one fifteen is is as explained. But I wanted something better. He is the image of the invisible God. So Jesus is. The image of the invisible. So if you see Jesus, you have seen God. Are we together? And the firstborn over all. So that means Jesus is the example of what every person who is a son of God is like. Senor. Now Jesus is not only an example for us. Jesus is also an example of us. Why is he an example of us? As many as received him, he gave them by power to be called the sons. So he's an example of me because he has also made me like him. Are we together? So he's the pattern. So I am like Christ. So he is like. So assume that I am Christ. Sawa. If I do this, every son. It should be in unison. Swinton is... You sit, 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 sit. I don't want slow brains here. You are slow brain, come. I want you have a phlegmatic, right? You take time to. Sorry. Good. So Jesus is an example for us and an example of me. Amazing. Are we together? Jesus is an example of me. He's an example for me. Sit. He's an example for me and an example of me. Because as many as received him, he gave them the power to be called the sons. <laughs> Are you understanding? So now, if Jesus is an example of me, 
it goes without saying what Jesus went through, I also have to. As I told you, you are not ready for me. Because I am in Christ. And if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Are we together? That creation is you have become a son of God. Like you become the example of Jesus. Are we together? And you become like Jesus. I'm going there, don't worry. I want you to take you. That's why I told you you're not ready for me. I've been telling you good things of what you are in Christ. <laughs> now I want to show you other good things that you are. <laughs> that you may not agree. They are good. But they are good. But they are good. Because God calls them good. And your definition of good must be what God calls good. Your definition of good must be what God calls good. Because there are some things that men call good. The Bible says, what is an abomination before? Before men is a praise. What is praised before men is an abomination before God. The praises of men are an abomination before God. So what men consider great, God considers it as trash. Abomination. Says what is that you're calling good? So what God calls good should be your standard of what is good. So if you are, if Christ is an example of you, if Christ is an example of Swinton, then what Jesus went through. Swinton must go through. There's no shortcut, my guy. There's no? Shortcut. <laughs> I don't think you want my message. But the good thing, I don't preach for you. John 19, 28. I preach what God wants me to preach. Not what you agree with. I preach what the Bible says. The Bible says, after this, Jesus knowing all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. So the things, there are things that Jesus accomplished that we have to accomplish. Sindio you have I'm quiet so that it sinks. After this, Jesus knowing that, you can go and read from verse 1. It is this, this is when he's, at, he's on the cross. His account on the cross. And he says, after this, after when Pilate betrayed him, he went through all that. After, knew, after he knew he had accomplished all things, he said, I thirst. So if you are an example, if Jesus is an example of you, it means everything he accomplished, you have to? You have to accomplish. Because you are in Christ. And there are things that Jesus accomplished through suffering. There are also things that Jesus accomplished through success. You have to accomplish both. <laughs> I repeat. There are things that Jesus accomplished through suffering. And there are things that Jesus accomplished through success. Achievements. Sour. So, you have to accomplish both. So the things you accomplish through suffering are the things that Jesus accomplished with his sufferings. You see, the Bible says Jesus endured the cross. So we must endure the cross. Jesus did what? So we must. Because the things that Jesus accomplished, we must also accomplish. The cross was part of Jesus' accomplishment. The cross. You must also pick up your cross and follow him. To accomplish that which he accomplished. Colossians 1, I think verse, uh, verse 20. That's right after, after, after that, where Paul begins to speak of himself. His Colossians, continue. I'll tell you where. 
Continue. Continue. That's, that's the end. Yes, this is it, verse 24. I now rejoice in my sufferings for you. <laughs> and fill up in my flesh what is lacking in the afflictions of Christ. For the sake of his body, which is the church, change the version. <laughs> eh? I rejoice to accomplish that which is lacking. At this time, I am suffering on your behalf, but I'm still happy. Christ himself suffered on behalf of his people, the church. Now, while I live in my human body, I also suffer. I continue to receive the pain that Christ received so that I may be complete. In that way, I help the church, which is like Christ's own body. Change the version. You are in Christ. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. So what Christ accomplished, you must accomplish. But the difference is, you are not accomplishing it by your own strength. He is giving you the strength to accomplish it. That's the difference. So if you go through sufferings, this time you are not going through suffering. On your own. He is supplying the work and supplying the energy. Are we together? That is why Paul is in prison but he's rejoicing. Look at what he says. I am glad when I suffer for you in my body. How can you be glad and suffer? How can glad and suffer be in the same sentence? It almost appears like Contradiction, right? It's like, I hope this email finds you well. <laughs> no, sir. The email has not found me well at all. But you see here, he is glad that he's suffering. Because this time, he's not suffering on his account. There is someone supplying him the energy that is called grace. That is called and grace is enabling him to rejoice in the suffering. Because now he knows, I am not suffering on my account. I'm suffering on the account of Christ. So what Christ accomplished, I am accomplishing as well. That's why he has supplied the grace. For the, for, by the grace of God, I am who I am. I am who I am by the grace of God. And the grace of God did not go to waste. I am glad when I suffer for you in my body. For I am participating. Look at that. Look at that. Ooh, can we read together? One, two, three. Uh -huh. I am participating in the sufferings of Christ. I am participating. I'm a participant. Surku and Yuliza, what is your part? <laughs> now your answer has come. You are saying, no, it can't be that easy. No. You mean there is nothing? Actually, Actually, there is something. This is the thing. You participate with Christ. You do what? In the sufferings of Christ. That's why you can be also participate in his glory. Because you've participated in his sufferings. That's why he told his disciples, you have been with me in my trials. I therefore give you a kingdom to sit at my table. Because you've been with me through it, you have the right to be with me in glory. If you participate with Christ in his sufferings, now, the glory that he gave to you, you are there on it by right. I don't know whether you understand what I mean by that. It's not like you deserve it. It's not like you earn it. It's more like, I don't want to use the word earn, I don't want to use the word deserve. Which other word can I use? 
Yeah. It is more of your way of accepting what Christ has done. It's your way of accepting the glory of Jesus that is given to you. You accept it how? By being willing to participate with him in his... Actually, I think that's the correct English. Your way of accepting that glory that Jesus has given to you is accepting to go through with him in his sufferings. So there are things you accomplish for Christ by sufferings. Glory and suffering are inseparable. Repeat after me. Glory, Glory. And, suffering and suffering are inseparable. That's what the Bible tells us. After you've suffered for a little while, I shall restore, strengthen, and place you on a firm foundation. After you've suffered for a little so glory and suffering are inseparable. So enduring things is an accomplishment just as achieving things is an accomplishment. There are things you accomplish just by enduring. And there are things you accomplish by achieving. So today I'm showing you, now that you've been made a son, what you will accomplish through the, sufferings, through the sufferings of Christ. Now that Jesus came to make us sons, what will you accomplish through the sufferings of Christ? Or through, by participating in the sufferings of Christ? And I'm telling you, enduring things eh, is an accomplishment just as achieving things is an accomplishment. So as long as we are following Christ, we have our portion to walk in. We have what? Ah, you don't like my message anymore, eh? You see, in life, in Christianity, in ministry, many people view accomplishment as positive things they have achieved for the Lord. You hear them say, oh, I'm a shepherd of six people. Oh, I'm a mission on location shepherd of 100 people. Glory to Jesus. Oh, our church has 1,500 children of God. By the mercy, by the special grace of God. Oh, a little one has become a thousand. Oh, on Sunday we baptized 500 people. In our church, in our mission on location, in our branch, in whatever it is, we have this and this. We have achieved this and this. My mission or location is hot. It's not cold. Neither is it lukewarm. I've achieved something for the Lord. It is hot. Indeed, that is true. Those are great accomplishments. But they are only one aspect of accomplishments that are required from us. There is another kind of accomplishment that is mentioned in the scripture. And this is the accomplishment of the cross. The accomplishment of sufferings that are destined for us as sons of God. Remember, he is not only an example for us, he is also an example of us. And if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. You are in Christ, so you are new. Tell me, I'm in Christ, so I'm new. So now my sufferings, so now my sufferings are an accomplishment. Just as my achieving things are my accomplishments. So you should have a list of the things you've suffered for Christ. Paul had that list. Put for me the list of Paul. I was shipwrecked. I was beaten to 40 minus ones. Put, please put for us that scripture instead of telling me you should be helping me find the scripture. You are doing what does not benefit me. They are telling me I was shipwrecked. I was beaten. This is it. Three times I was beaten with rods. Three. Rods. Rods in the tumor. No, no. He's remembering his accomplishments in Christ. 
suffering <laughs> is an accomplishment just as achieving things is enduring is an accomplishment just as achieving things is that's what the Bible says in the scripture I read you in John okay first let's read this three times I was beaten with rods once I was stoned three times I was shipwrecked number three a night and a day I was in the deep like I was lost in the water for a night okay let's use an easier version any easier version easy Bible whatever three times I was beaten with rods Maratatu. he's counting them as an accomplishment a book on a start from verse 23 look at this are they Christ's servants I serve him even better than they do. Now I'm speaking like a crazy person. I work much more than they have worked. I have been in, look at that now. He's showing them why, he has, why he's better of a man of God than they. <laughs> the achievements. Yeah, I'm going to show off. I'm better than you. You guys have been saying you're better than me. Okay, let me prove to you. Now let me talk like a fool. I'm also better than you. Let me prove to you I'm better than you. Number one, let me come to your level. He says, number one, I have been in prison more often than you have. He says, I work more harder than they have worked. And he's showing you his achievements, his works. I have been in prison more than you. I have, I have, I, people have hit me with whips very many times. He has not even counted those times. This version is not. The other one was telling us three times. This one is saying very many times. This is, oh, this is whips. This is not rods. This is whips. Many, he, he has not even counted the whips. He lost count. He lost count. He lost count. He lost count. He I have spiritual blessings in heavenly place and they are not manifesting. Like someone was telling me today, Pastor, what, what, why do you tell us that we have blessings in heavenly places and I'm broke? Achieving, brother. You're achieving. I told him you are achieving something for Christ. Enduring is much of an accomplishment. As achieving things is an accomplishment. Enduring. Enduring to know that I have blessings in heavenly places but I'm broke. Is an achievement. Enduring that is an achievement. After he knew that everything that needed to be accomplished was accomplished, he said, I thirst. And I'm telling you, to achieve things is an accomplishment. Just as to endure through sufferings is an accomplishment. Raising the dead and being whipped are both achievements. Raising the dead and you are dying of sickness is still an achievement. Praying for the sick and they get healed and you go home and take Maramoja, you, the one that laid hands on the sick, is an achievement. Praying for other people's job, they get jobs and you go home and you're jobless is an achievement. Or you lose your job. Praying for people's parents who are unwell and they get healed. And you, you go home and find your, pa, your father, the one you prayed for, is dead. is an achievement. We want to thank God for this shepherd. The God of my shepherd has come through. The God of my shepherd has raised my father from the dead. You wonder, which God? My, my own dad is dead. My own dad is dead. After he had accomplished these things that needed to be accomplished, he said, I thirst. There are things that must be accomplished now that you're in Christ. Some of them are negative. Some of them are positive. But both of them are achievements. What God considers achievement is what Paul is showing us here. I have been whipped many times. I have nearly died many times. I have nearly died many times. 
mara mingi hata hiyo hajahesabu verse 24 at five different times the jewish leader punished me with whips from leaders yeah part of the whips is from leaders there is ingine ni za watu wa kawaida but the ones i remember how many they are they are from leaders because perhaps those ones were something else they must be have been something else <laughs> each time they hit me 39 times so 5 times 39 in the city of paul 195 195 in the city of paul portfolio tumesemanyeni man of god let me use show you a man of god what have you been through what have you survived is an accomplishment just as achieving things is an accomplishment walking 4 kilometers every day to go and visit one sheep is an accomplishment just as who doesn't, doesn't like you nikanesa kana uchungwa nas what have you been through what have you suffered so like, who doesn't even come to church and doesn't like you it is an accomplishment just as someone else has five sheep who come to church who honor him on his birthday you you us does not honor you does not respect you it is an accomplishment it is just as the other one is an accomplishment everybody must have a portfolio with the things you've endured and the things you've achieved and if anything the things you've endured should be more than the things you've achieved because paul had at that one time that he achieved he's showing us more of the things he has endured and this is the apostle of grace this is grace he is is the preacher to the gentiles he's showing us what it means to have christ live in you and what it means to live in christ what it means you to live in christ Simko mnanyuliza which is your part? Eh now that we found Christ what are we gonna do with him? Now that we found Christ what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do with him? Make it personal now that I found Christ This is what I will do for him. I will end your suffering now that I found Christ. This is what I will do for him. This is what you will do now that you're in Christ. Because Christ is not just an example for you. He's also an example of you. Of you. Continue go back to my guy 39 times 5 195 times eh eh twendele sivi jaisha three times the romans punished me with sticks rods people threw stones at me to kill me once stoning mob justice so remember the bible says the rebellious one should be killed by stones is it, what do we call that stoning there's a name for it I forgotten stoning and remember we were told that when they were stoning they were targeting one place the head like a snake their target was the head because the aim is to kill they're not stoning you so that you wake up and go in fact if you read the book of acts where he directs what happened he says they left him thinking he was dead oh, yes. then he woke up <laughs> he must have been dead because scholars believe it is at that time that he caught himself in the third heavens it is at that time where he says i know a man was in the spirit whether in the flesh i don't know but he was caught up in the third heavens and the things i saw and heard i'm not permitted to speak it is at that time he had died then he resurrected from the dead the jesus in him resurrected because you can't kill jesus he is in christ And I'm telling you because now you are in Christ. Jesus is an example of you, madam. What Jesus endured, you have to endure. 
So look at this, Acts 14, 19. Then some Jews arrived three there in Lystra. They had traveled from Antioch and from Incam. They talked to the people so that they turned against Paul. Then the Jew threw stones at Paul to do what? To they threw stones to do what? To they pulled his body to the outside town. They thought that he was dead. After they stoned him, they thought this guy is dead. <laughs> Maybe while he's shaking, there's no pulse. He's not even moving. So let's take him out of the town so that he dies. Asinukia uko. That is what he's saying. I was stoned once. And these guys were pros because it, is on the, it was in the law. They were Jew. They had done it over and over. Now they were masters. If they find you, if they find you adulterating, stone. If they find you an rebellious child, they stone. Many things were punished by stoning. And they didn't even, after they stoned him, they didn't even carry the body. They pulled it. Because the guy is dead. He's a body. They are saying he pulled the body, not the person. The body. What does it mean? He's dead. When do, you, when do people refer to you as a body? When you're dead. The body of so and so is lying there. Now that you're in Christ, my guy, there are things you have to achieve for him. And some of those things would, would be enduring. And enduring is much of an accomplishment as achieving. You must endure. I'll show you the things. You must endure shepherding one person for long. You must endure shepherding people who don't like you. He told you, I don't like to be, being part of you. That's what they told you, but you must endure. You must endure their insults. <laughs> I don't want to go ahead of myself. Go back to my scripture. So they stoned him once. Three times I've been on ships that broke in the sea. Buddha, you don't want to be in the sea and the ship breaks down. I've been to the sea. One day you'll be in the sea. Amen. We went to the deep sea to fish. The waves. Snorkeling. You know snorkeling? Where you go, you dive into the sea. Me, I did not dive. My wife did. Me, I said, I did not come to kill myself. <laughs> I refused. I was told, God, my pastor was saying, jump, jump. I said, pastor, are you, you, me, I'm okay. Let these guys jump. Me, I not lay my life down because I have no power to take it up. I have no power to take it up. Now, imagine he was there three times. No oxygen. The waves are blowing in the middle of nowhere. He can't see land. The heat, extreme heat, extreme cold, and no food. And darkness is total darkness. And you know, one, 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 one torment that people who don't know Jesus will receive is a torment of darkness. There's a section in hell that is full of darkness. You know hell is in compartments. There's a compartment for smoke, for fire, for warmth, another compartment for darkness. By the way, don't think that dhambi ni dhambi. No, 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 no your sins will be measured. God is a just God. God is a just God. You will be, you will be judged and sentenced according to your sins. There will be measured. What is judgment? The weight of your... A murderer cannot receive the same punishment as a fornicator. Unless God is not just. But he says he's a just God. Where should I... Excuse me, my own mistake was to Ah... Ah, if anything, you want to have few. <laughs> you want to have few, if anything. You, I'm speaking like a fool. If anything, you want to have them few. So at one point, I hear on your slaps turn up. So kill a sick with five slaps. Pa, 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 pa. You will receive judgment according to what each man did. That's what the Bible says. So, so if you, eh? so you will, you will be, you will receive according to your measure. The Bible says even rewards you receive according to what you did. Yeah. You will not receive same reward. Yeah. Yeah. God is just and fair. He's a just and a, his foundation is justice and righteousness. Justice means being fair. Being fair. Eh? Exactly. Murder, murderer of one and serial killer are different. 
Even in human courts. Human courts where justice is not pure justice. You understand? Because man is impartial. Of course, man does not know everything. He's not like God. He's not, he's not truly just. Because he's man. There are things that he, maybe he didn't see. They, they have overlooked a few things. Even here, a serial killer cannot be punished like a man's slaughter. Silio, what makes you think that God, who is, his foundation is justice. His throne has a foundation. And the foundation of that throne is justice and righteousness. One day I'll teach you about the bema seat of Christ and judgment. Hell has different compartments. And you will go to the one, there are those who will be tormented more than others. Yeah. There are those who will be tormented more than others. You are in hell, but the experience is not the same. There are levels. It's in the book of Isaiah. You cannot be treated the same as Satan. Satan, the Bible says, the old man who has deceived the whole world. He has deceived the whole world. What are two libras scary? We treat you the same. You treat you the same. No, I don't want to teach about it now. Don't. You will make me now divert the message. He's giving me the script. No, no, I will, I will not flow. Someone is saying flow. I have, a, I have a target that I want to get to. I'm flowing where I want, not where you want me to flow. Christ the wisdom and Christ the power of God. So my point is, even hell has compartments. That's what the scripture shows us. Yeah. There is a place for maggots. There are those who will go there. Maggots become their... <laughs> In fact, there's a message. I've preached about this. What will happen when you die? Just go find the series and listen to it. What will happen when you die? What will happen when... So he says, three times I've been on a ship that has broken down. Once I was in the sea for a night and day. <laughs> this, is, this is his job, his achievement. His achievement in the ministry. His achievement of being in Christ. His accomplishment. You know, we live in a world that thinks accomplishment is only achieving things. But that's not the standard of God. The standard of God, accomplishment is both enduring and achieving. Both. And in fact, it appears like those who endure more are they that have achieved more. Is it like those who have achieved more? Eh? It leads to achievement, yes. Those who have endured more leads to a greater achievement. Vis-a-vis. -vis. Those who have just achieved and not suffered. Because look at Christ. Christ, what he achieved from suffering is greater than what the world considers is an achievement. We, we, don't, we don't see feeding 5,000 people as an achievement that is listed of all the things that Jesus achieved. But to the world, feeding 5,000 people, uh, they say this man loves the people. Jesus did not build the church. We don't see Jesus building any temple, like physical temple. He's not like the, the, the centurion who said this man is worthy to be visited by you, Jesus. Why? He has built a synagogue. He has built a synagogue for us, and he loves the people. We don't see Jesus doing that. Yeah. We don't see Jesus starting a university. No, 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 no. Uh, yeah. Jesus University, Jesus university of Israel. <laughs> <laughs> we don't see Jesus traveling out of Israel. No we don't, Jesus has no passport. Jesus does not even have an iPhone. Jesus didn't even hear, didn't have a car. When he needed a colt, he, he, he told the disciples, and then the master wants it. He didn't even have his own. Like, you get what I mean? Like, designated to him. that when he needs to travel, that is his Mercedes. No, when he needed something to use, he sent his disciples to go and get. Jesus didn't even have, Jesus didn't even didn't have a house. Eh? A mansion, he didn't have a mansion. He, the Bible says that he had, the son of man had nowhere to lay his head. Even Agadakua. Agadaku. That means like a small house. Even Agadaku he didn't have. An Isimba. Jesus didn't have an Isimba. He didn't have. But what Jesus has achieved, 
through his sufferings is far greater than through his achievements. Yeah, like you, we are his, his achievements. The Bible says his wealth is in the saints. His riches are in the saints. If you are in Christ, you are going to achieve some things, but they will be through suffering. And they are far greater of achievements. Look, I'm not talking about the sufferings that come from your foolish consequences. No. You are pregnant. Then you say they are persecuting me. They are persecuting me. Why are they persecuting me? Oh, because I, I just fell and now I'm pregnant. Where what are Jinga? That is consequency. And consequency comes from two words. Co and sequence. Sequence means follows after. A series comes after. Action, reaction. So every action has a reaction. Right? So if you have bad choices, I'm not talking about those sufferings that come from your bad financial choices. Ultimiwa rentu kakula. So umefungiwa nyumba. Alafu nasema, what have you been through? What have you suffered? Mini mefungiwa nyumba. We wacha ujinga bwala. Wacha bwala. Do you see Paul saying things like that? What, what, what of these things was in Paul's control? None. That's the type of suffering I'm talking about. What has nothing to do with you? In fact, if you're in your senses, you'd want to be at peace with the leaders. Right? But your preaching is stirring up the leaders, so they have to beat you. You either have to choose either to please God or to please men. At a point he said, choose whom you will please. Either God or men. You mean I have five minutes and I've just started? Ah, tomorrow is holy day, yeah. Today I'll preach like Paul. <laughs> if one of you dies, I resurrect you. <laughs> you must suffer something. In fact, one of the enduring. <laughs> so I'm, I want you to know. I want you to know that being in Christ means achieving what Christ achieved. And some of those achievements are from suffering. They are, they are enduring things. They are what? Enduring. enduring things. Look at the neighbor behind you, give them a high five, tell them we have to endure. <laughs> Mr. Drama Guy, we have to endure. So Jesus knew that he was accomplishing some things. Shh, now enough. Jesus knew that he was accomplishing some things by enduring and surviving the torments, the contradictions, the envy, the wickedness that was unleashed against him by the sinful men. He knew he was accomplishing some things. Hey, okay, Luke 18, 31. Look at this. <laughs> Can you do it together? One, two, three. Then he took the twelve aside and said to them, Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And all things that are written by the prophets concerning the Son of Man will be... All that is written must be accomplished. If you are in Christ, now that you are in Christ, what Christ accomplished. What is written that Christ accomplished, you must accomplish. You will accomplish the achievements, and you will also accomplish the endurance. Endurance, the sufferings, the endurance. So the accomplishments of Jesus on the cross are in a different category from the accomplishment of things that you feel are accomplishments. Did you understand what I mean? Good. So, so the accomplishment of Christ on the cross are accomplishments of the things that you have to be through and to survive now that you are in him. 
What have you been through? What have you survived? Let me ask you a question. What is, an, what is accomplished when someone goes through suffering? What is the benefit of enduring such hardships, pain and affliction? This is the question that many people ask who have an, a, a conventional view of accomplishment. People who feel like accomplishments are just positive things, conventional view of, a, of, a, of accomplishments, feel that what do you get by enduring? What do you accomplish by enduring pain? By enduring hurt? Have you heard people say, how can you be God and you've killed my mother? Have you heard people say that? You almost asked that. How can you be God and I'm jobless? Don't you realize that God wants you to accomplish some things in pain? The Bible says, let patience have its perfect work. That you may be complete, lacking nothing. How can I be divorcing and I'm a man of God? How can Jesus be the son of God and he's dying on a cross? How can Jesus be God and human beings are killing him? How can he be God? If you're God, save yourself. Take yourself out of that cross. How can Jesus be God and he's being slapped by soldiers? And spat on. And he's God. He's God, come on. You, you're not even God. You're just jobless. <laughs> and you've already started saying, how can you be God and I'm jobless? Now, what would Jesus say? What is my Godship if human beings are killing me? Look, how can the creator be killed by the creation? What does he accomplish? <laughs> Stop having a conventional view of achievements and accomplishments in the Lord. The Bible considers sufferings as an accomplishment for Christ. So the Bible considers the suffering on the cross or on a cross an accomplishment. You see, in many occasions, Jesus experienced afflictions and pain. And in many occasions in the scripture as well, the afflictions and the experiences on the cross are described as an accomplishment. The scripture we just read, Jesus himself said, we must accomplish the things that must be accomplished. So he considered going to the cross as an accomplishment. Luke 12, 50. Look at what he said. But I have to undergo a baptism. And how distressed I am. But I, have, I have, but I have a baptism to be baptized with. And I, how di distressed I am till it is accomplished. Change the version. Another version says, I'm sorrowful. I am full of sorrow. I'm full of sorrow. Change the version, please. I have a baptism of pain to receive. I cannot rest until it is. He was, he was aware. That pain is an accomplishment. And it is coming. Change the version. It is a baptism we have all to go through. Now that you are in Christ, expect it. Paul said, I must suffer in the body. I must participate in the sufferings of Christ. I must participate on his behalf. In fact, another time Paul says, I must participate in the fellowship of his sufferings. So it's like the suffering is me having fellowship with the Lord. It's me having fellowship with the Lord. Without the suffering, we can't have fellowship. And fellowship is deep communion. Fellowship is not what you, the conventional person, thinks of fellowship. Many of you have a fellowship in the Kanisa. Sindio, and a fellowship. Apana, fellowship was a deep communion that involved pain sometimes. Just that language of our time changes and the meaning of some words is lost. Even maybe right now they should stop using the word fellowship to 
speak of sufferings because fellowship has been reduced to ushirika naenda ushirika unaenda wapi mama naenda ushirika shaza ushirika naenda ushirika kwa mama waidera it has been reduced but suffering was a deep communion that sometimes involved pain fellowship is what a, 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 a man has with his wife that's fellowship deep intercourse deep communion soul to soul joy to joy pain to pain peace to peace that's what we ex we we get <laughs> that i may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings dictionary definition of the word fellowship maybe some of you don't believe what i'm saying you're saying pastor si anamaanisha ushirika fellowship comes from two words fellows and sheep so it means fellows in the same sheep which sheep the sheep of suffering if you are in the same sheep and you begins to capsize all of us die sindio and you should download a dictionary my guy and i'm saying it for the last time that i may know him i want a good dictionary maybe webster let me see what webster says This one is not giving me the correct one. It's giving me your ushirika ya kanisa. I want one that has the original meaning. What was used in the 12th century? Anyway, when you go home do your research but you understand what i mean by fellowship yeah deep communion yeah this that's what i'm saying is describing the wrong thing what not what i want this is a friendly it's a friendly feeling so that I may know him and the power of his resurrection change the version for me and the fellowship of his sufferings please change the version please look at that i want to suffer with him sharing in his death i'm suffering with him change the version again i want to have the same yeah look at this fellowship is having the same kind of experience so he says i want to have the same kind of troubles that he did same kind same as i am telling you enduring is an accomplishment just as much achieving is an accomplishment jesus says i have a baptism that i have to go through and i will not rest until i go through it i will not do what I will not do what? I will not do what? So Jesus went through great suffering. And there is some great significance in the degree to which we experience the similar suffering that Christ went. 1 Peter 4:13. 1 Peter 4:13. I would like you to listen to this and to this message again. So that you know what Jesus came to do. Jesus came to make us sons of God. And we are sons of God. Jesus is an example for us and an example of us. We must experience what he experienced because we are sons of God. That's why you see all his apostles died almost like him. Crossed, hung on the cross, some upside down, some dipped in fire, some cut. But all they were not feeling like ah this is too too much. No, because Jesus gave them the power to. So grace was released. Do you think Jesus was on the cross and he was feeling gay 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 gay? Atomenifanyaje. 
In fact, on the cross, he was not saying, I'll revenge. What was he saying? I for forgive them, Father, for they don't know what they do. <coughs> you know, the guys who killed Jesus, 70 years, after, 70 years after his death, even the town that Jesus died was wiped out. They say blood was flowing when, when Romans attacked Jerusalem and finished it. Blood was flowing in Jerusalem one inch thick. One inch thick. Because of that statement, forgive them, Father, for they don't know what they do. Look, the kingdom of God, I was teaching Pastor Cecilia, has something called the law of the reverse, or reversal law. In the kingdom of God, when you want A, you go for B. For example, seek ye first the kingdom of God, and these things you seek shall be added. So in, in the natural realm, if you want a car, what do you seek? A car. If you want a house, what do you seek? If you want money, what do you seek? But in the kingdom of God, if you want a car, if you want a house, if you want money, you seek the kingdom. It looks like you are turning away from it. And in actual sense, what you are turning away from is what you get. In the kingdom of God, if you want to go up, what do you do? You go low. He that humbles himself shall be exalted. So if you want to go up in the kingdom of God, you go down. In the kingdom of God, if you want to get, you give. It's called the law of reverse. That's how the kingdom of God is. Give and it shall be given back. It doesn't make sense. That's why it, you must do it by faith. If you want people to honor you, what do you do? You give honor. Give honor to whom honor is due. Look, if you want, if you want things to be well with you, what do you do? Honor your father and mother, and you shall be well with him. You shall be well with him. Who is it well with? So if you want things to be well with you, don't concern yourself by making things well with you. Give honor to others. If you want to be honored, honor others. If you want to be promoted, promote others. If I'm exalted, I'll draw men to myself. Is that not promotion? The kingdom of God works in reverse. If you want God to forgive you, you have to forgive others. That's why he said, I forgive them, Father, for they don't know what they do. And because of him forgiving, God forgave. And then he says, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. So he avenges on your behalf. You should have gone to avenge, but you say, no, I'm going to forgive. Instead of you avenging, you forgive. So what does he do? He avenges for you. Now, he avenged for Jesus. 70 years after his death, one inch, go, go watch the documentary on YouTube, one inch of blood flowing through Jerusalem. The city he was crucified in was wiped out. Wiped out. It took 1,947 years later for them to reassemble in Jerusalem and say this is our country. 1947. 1,947 years later after they killed him. After they killed him. He avenged. He avenged. God avenged his death. <laughs> if someone tells you, okay, fine, I have forgiven you. It's not a very really nice statement. Because now it means he has, handled, he has handed over the right for someone to avenge from himself to someone whose foundation is justice and righteousness. And justice means being fair. And the fairness of God says an eye for an eye. A tooth for a tooth. That's the justice of God. That is why Christ came to fulfill that justice. So when God looks at me, he sees Christ. So he's not angry with me. Because Christ has fulfilled all the requirements of the justice of God in him. And I am in him. So as long as I'm in Christ, what the law requires, I have fulfilled it. And the law is just. I'll be talking about that on Sunday. The law is just. That's why we are in Christ. We are in Christ. It's not like... 
akasema ah nimewasamea amekusamea juku na mtu amelipia that person is called who Christ do you understand what i'm saying how many are lost how many are with me ah vizuri sana so this statement father forgive them 70 years after his death wiped out Jerusalem up to now these guys are still at home because they chose if you read John 19 they chose a thief over their savior and they are the family of God the chosen race of God they chose a thief in fact in John 19 they says when say when he told that Caesar is your king that Jesus is your king they say no we only have one king he's called Caesar <laughs> Caesar was the roman king see you 70 years later what he did to them because they chose Caesar over their savior <laughs> you must be in Christ you must be so that all the requirements of the law are fulfilled where in Christ and in you but they cried out away with him away with him crucify him pilate said to them shall i crucify your king the chief priest answered we have no king but caesar mfalme wetu ni osama tutatambua Osama. Uruto ni nani? Sisi mtu wetu ni Osama. Sawa. Mmekataa Ruto? Jo amewa tax. Mnaletewa Osama. Osama anawafanya kitu. Anawa finish kwa malo. Anawatumia anafanya style deadly deadly. Anawa finish, anawa malo. Na ma style deadly deadly. Do you understand me? That was just a detour. I don't know why I got there. But I believe the Holy Spirit wanted you to know that. So enduring things is an accomplishment just as achieving things is an accomplishment. That's what the Bible says in the scripture I read for you when we started, John 19:28. Jesus knowing all things were now accomplished that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. First Peter 5:1 and ASB Therefore I exalt the elders among you as your fellow elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ and a partaker also of the glory that will be revealed I am a witness and a partaker I'm a witness and I am a witness and So what are the things that you must endure on behalf of Christ? Because now I look like I don't have time. What are the things you must endure on behalf of Christ? Hebrews 12. Hebrews 12. Because Jesus came to make us sons. Repeat after me. Jesus came to make us sons. Jesus came to do what? Therefore we also since we are surrounded by such great cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every weight and sin which so easily and ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race that is set let us run with continue looking unto Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured what endured what despising the shame and I sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. He endured the cross because of the glory that awaited. On Sunday I was talking to some shepherds and I told them when you run a marathon whether you win or not what do you receive? A medal. You receive a medal, right? Everybody who runs a marathon and finishes whether they won or not just by the virtue of their endurance being in the marathon from the beginning 
to the end, they all receive a, a certificate and a medal. Why do they receive it? For being number last. Eh? Do they receive it for finishing as the 170th person? Eh? Why do they receive it? For enduring the pain for two kilometers of marathon. That's what he's telling us. You accomplish some things for Jesus by enduring to the end. That's why he says, those who shall endure to the end shall be saved. Those who endure to the end, it is they who shall be saved. So there's a reward of enduring, sticking it through to the end. Now that you're in Christ, you are accomplishing some things, my dear, by enduring. Enduring. I don't know what God is going to call you to endure or what God is making you endure. Some of you must endure failure. Look at Jeremiah, my God. He had only one convert for his entire ministry, Baruch, the guy who used to write on his behalf, his translator or his transcriber, whoever they call, or the one he dictates and what do you call that guy? Transcriber. Eh? His transcriber. That was his only convert. But is he considered a major prophet? People hated Jeremiah. Look at Paul. Look at the accomplishments he's, he's lifting. Eh? What are they out of? Or what are you saying? It's not like it was an act of love. Yeah, I get you. It's not like the things that Paul endured were acts of love. Both stoning. Is that a love language from, from your place? That if you want to love Val, come and stone her. <laughs> Being beaten with rods three times. Is that a love language? No. So are those things out of love? What were they out of? Hatred. Raw hate. So what are the, some of the things you must endure? Number one, temptation. Temptation. Matthew 4, 1. Temptation. Matthew 4, 1. Therefore, then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He was led of the Spirit to be tempted. Look for one. Look for one. Luke 4, 1. Then Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. To be what? Verse 2. Being tempted for 40 days by the devil, and in those days he ate nothing, and afterward, when they had, he had ended, he was hungry. Matthew 27, verse 42. He, show, he saved others. Himself, he cannot save. If he is the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross and we will believe him. One of the things you have to endure is temptation. And I would like you to know this about temptation. Temptation is persistent. Temptation is? The temptation Jesus received at the beginning of his ministry was the same temptation that he received at the end of his ministry. That is how persistent temptation is. The temptation that you received at the beginning of your Christianity will be the very temptation that will keep cropping up in your life all through your ministry to the end. Same temptation. I'm going to show you the temptation of Jesus just now. Same temptation. It may come in different forms. But it's the same. Some of you, the temptation you received when you just got born again is the temptation of wanting to be independent. You don't want to be under anyone's authority. You feel like, I cannot be controlled. Me, I've received my call from the Lord. Direct. Nobody can tell me anything. That will be the same temptation you will have to endure to the end of your ministry. Some of you, the temptation you received is women. Women are scat. You have a ministry for women. Wanaku finish, wanaku malo. Nama style, deadly, deadly. 
Hadi wazazi. I did not say that. <laughs> but that is experience speaking. <laughs> that is experience speaking. <laughs> it came out with so much weight. That is experience speaking. <laughs> it carries authority. That is the same temptation. The temptations of Jesus, number one, the first temptation is turn these stones into bread. Second temptation, throw yourself from this high point in the, in the temple and angels will come and hold you. That temptation, that, that, that temptation is bow and I'll give it to you. All those temptations have to do with one thing, prove that you are God. Right? Or misuse the authority that you have because you are God. Mm -hmm. Turn these stones into bread. Why does God have to turn stones to bread to eat? Why does he have to use the power of Godship to turn stones into bread to eat? fish. What Satan is trying to show him, misuse your authority as God. Throw yourself and angels will come. It is true, angels will come. But why do I have to throw myself for angels to be released? Prove a point. Misuse the authority. Number three, bow and I'll give it to you. All that, all, everything that Satan is saying I'll give it to you is his. Why should he bow? Just to prove he is God. That is the same temptation we see. The scripture I've just read to you as the last scripture. Matthew what? Matthew 27, 42. If you are God, you saved others. So you do a your cross. Mr. Healing the Sick, so you, heal, so, you heal the, so you heal yourself now. Mr. Raiser of the Dead, so you raise yourself. We have heard your, have heard your stories. You raise the Jairus' daughter, so you save yourself there. You gave the blind eyes. Come on, you blind eyes. Could you talk across in the Urashindo? What is a cross? Same temptation. But Jesus never did that. He did not. Next verse. He did not. He did not save himself from the cross. He trusted in God and let him deliver him now. Oh, uh, he trusted in God. Let him deliver him now if he will live, if he will have him. For he said, I am the son. Continue, verse 44. Even the robbers who were crucified with him revealed him with the same thing. They spoke to him, even robbers. Same thing. God. You even trust in God. We may trust God. Nani we Aji. Mungu wako wako. Mungu sema mna yenda kanisa ni nini? Sindi mna kanisa eh? Sasa wana mmekuwa broke. Na hii kanisa yenu. Suna shiki kanisa wewe. Suna shina kuku yamba wapa wapa. Wewe mungu wako wako pia shina kuku muomba. You will be. Or you are almost. You almost want to be tempted to say, "Mna jua mungu wangu wako wewe." Then you go and do something to prove that God is there. That's the same temptation. And temptations are persistent. Temptations are persistent. They come in different forms and shapes. But they are persistent. You will accomplish a lot for God by enduring that temptation. Enduring. Not falling for it. God would, Jesus would have easily jumped. Continue. He would have easily jumped. He would have jumped. In fact, he doesn't, he doesn't say, and now Jesus responded to them. He kept quiet. In fact, the scripture I read you on Sunday says that he was like a sheep that was being led to the slaughter, but he was quiet. He was quiet. Now from the sixth hour until the ninth hour, from 12 noon to 3. Yesterday I was looking at the NASA website that deals with the eclipse. And this eclipse was recorded when Jesus died, 33 AD. This eclipse. And, and, and NASA says it lasted for 2 hours and 50 minutes. This is basically 3 hours. Re recorded by NASA as one of the eclipses that happened in the world. Top scientific body. If you doubt that Jesus ever existed, NASA says there was an eclipse in Jerusalem, 33 AD. 
around they say around april march there they give they don't give a definite date but you can go check it out on nasa website i think they will give a date tell on neighbor neighbor jesus is there April 3rd, 33 AD. The NASA lunar eclipse information indicates that a partial lunar eclipse occurred on April 3rd, 33 CE. CE is common era or AD. Secular people don't use AD because they don't want to, to acknowledge that Jesus existed. So they use CE, common era. Because if they say AD, then they're acknowledging that Jesus existed and they don't want to... After, so if, you, if they see AD, you'll ask them, after the death of who? Jesus. And that's what they don't want to acknowledge. So they use CE, common era. With a peak totaling happening about 1647, 51 seconds. 16, 4, 47, and 51 seconds. Local time in Jerusalem. NASA solar eclipse table also indicates there was a total solar eclipse on March 19th, 33 CE, with a peak total that is about... As 19th and when he was crucified. This. The Bible is accurate. What is Matthew telling us? Now from the 6th hour until the ninth hour, there was darkness over all. Simple. There was an eclipse. See, eclipse need darkness. And he says it's called a total darkness. And NASA says it was a total eclipse. Like what happened in the US yesterday. Total eclipse. So total darkness. Did he prove he was God? It is God who proved that that's my son. The world became dark. But he didn't. You must endure through temptations. The Bible says there's no temptation that has overcome you. For all temptation is common to men. And every temptation you go through, the Lord shall create a way of escape. I want to believe the way of escape for Jesus in this temptation was God creating darkness. Because that alone showed these people. Because after, I continue. Continue. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Continue. Some of those who stood there, when they heard this, they said, this man is calling for Elijah. Eh? Immediately one of them ran and took a sponge and blah, 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 offered him a drink. Uh -huh. I want to where they said, surely this was the son of God. The rest said, let him, let him alone. Let us see if Elijah will come to save him. <laughs> hey, Jesus. What one is our eh? So when the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and the things that had happened, they feared greatly, saying, truly, this was the son of? So Jesus didn't need to prove. He doesn't need to continue trusting in God. And what they were telling him to prove, God proved it on, the, on his behalf. What, what you just want? Don't, 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 don't fall for the temptation of wanting to prove that God is with you. Just be quiet. Believe. Believe the word. God will prove on your behalf that he is with you. It should just be a matter of days or years. And they will say, Hey, and you have come to Kakonamungu. It has happened to me practically. They laughed at me. They said, I'm finished. They said, What can happen to me? Ah, we are Kijana Misha. At an amok water, yes. Oi, Mongalia Kazakin and Matuku Omba Kutembea. Kazakin to Ganda Kanisa. Ah, now, when they see me, they say, come and mentor our children. The same ones who are talking. The same ones who are talking. I would have easily wanted to prove. I'm, I'm sure I was, even I was tempted. Because I was tempted. This is calling me like this and you are God. This is a temptation we all have to go through. And we must all endure. Because we are in Christ. We are in Remember, I have told you temptations are persistent. Temptations are persistent. That very temptation you received will keep coming through your life. 
in different forms and shapes. Some of even your temptation is now lying low because you are broke. It's waiting until you have money. Because your temptation needs money. You are humble right now. Today I texted someone. Then they told me, oh, they even called me, dad, thank you for texting me. I appreciate. In my heart I said, this one is saying like this because of where she is in her life. I'm waiting to see if one day when God raises her and she becomes great, it will be a privilege that I text her or it will be a bother. That's what I'm nini? Right now you can play humble. You can play humble. Pastor, my pastor told me when I was in Meru, success is harder to handle than failure. Because riches have a voice. And the voice of riches is called deceit. Deceitful voice. Deceitfulness of riches. The voice of riches is deceit. Ni wongo. So success is harder to handle. Some of you here, you come to church every Sunday. You are serving God because you are a shepherd. Now, I want a job. Wait until you get a job. Wait until you get a job. You know tomorrow is Monday and this pastor is always keeping us here. We have to iron our clothes. I cannot linger because you know I have a family. We have to take them for family lunch. You know I need to rest. I've been working throughout the week. Ah, Today is my only off. Remember, the voices of deceit are the voices of riches. Or the voices of riches are the voices of deceit. Riches have a voice. And that voice is called lies. Wongo. Ma wongo. Ma? Ma wongo. Ma wongo deadly deadly. Ma chocha. And the intention is one. The intention is Kuku finish, kuku malo. That's the intention. Riches have a deceiving power. They deceive. Success is harder to handle. I've been praying for myself, Lord, we are believing for 5,000 children of God. Please deal with my heart. I don't know what will happen. I, I don't want to miss my mark. The day you see 5,000 children are calling you pastor. Your heart can be lifted up. You say, I have done this. Easy. Wait, wait. Zoni yako nime fikisha mia. Au ambiwi? Nanani. Nanani. Wanasama una ambiwa nanani. Wanasama I'm a centurion now. Wanasama I'm a public figure. Wanasama I'm a public figure. I'm not a public figure. For security purposes. Mia. Dada yangu. Some of you, you are humble because you don't have a boyfriend. A beloved. The day you get a beloved, my man, it will be my man this, my man that. Why did you not come to church? My man. Where are you now? My man. Where are you going tomorrow? My man. I'll in the text, I'm sorry. My man. My man here. My man there. My man now. My man tomorrow. Eh? Usalimi watu. My man I said I should not say hi. My man said I should not hug. <laughs> I'm waiting. Remember I have told you the temptation is persistent. It will be the same temptation. Different forms. But the same? Temptation. I was talking to my disciples here. I told them, I want you to go and write down your temptation. Take note what is your temptation so that if it walks through the door, you can spot it. You can spot it. You can say, that's my temptation. I know how it comes. I know how it looks. I know who it is coming from. You say, that's my letter. Angalia stamp. That's my letter. No, I don't know whether you guys used to receive letters in high school. Eh? And they would come with them during the assembly at four and read them out on Fridays. As house was on Wednesday. Then they would do Wednesday and Friday as well. Then you would actually almost predict this person who always sends you and he sends you with a particular type of envelope or the design, the calligraph. 
the, letter, the envelope might be different, but the calligraph or the stamp. You say, and true to what you are saying, that's your letter. That's exactly what temptations are. Your temptation is tailor-made for you. It's tailor-made. It is within your preferences and your likings. <laughs> you, you cannot be tempted like Jesus to prove you are God. You are not. So Satan has no business telling you prove you are. But he can tempt you with loving a fellow man and you are a man. Because maybe in your childhood, you were introduced to that unconsciously. Eh? The, red the red stew. It's called the red stew syndrome. The Bible calls it. Red stew syndrome. <laughs> now that you are in Christ, endure. You are accomplished by enduring. You are accomplished by Endure the temptation of wanting to be independent. Especially cholerics. Cholerics, you don't want to be governed because you are leaders. You feel like, I cannot be under another leader. Me, I know. I'm, I, 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 I can rule myself. My pastor told me, the temptation of a choleric is because you don't want to be under another leader. You go, you go, you go, then you self-explode. He, he calls self you, you explode. You have self-explosion. Self-destruction. <clears throat> because there was no one to govern you. To bring you back. That's your temptation as a choleric. He told me, that's your temptation. He told me, Pastor Boni, that's your temptation. And I agree, that's my temptation. How I know it's my temptation is when, before I started out, the day after I just gave my life to Jesus, he came to me in a dream. And he told me, if you remain where you are, I will use you to influence your generation. If you remain, then in the dream, I saw myself walking with my pastor. So my greatest temptation would be to feel like, now I have made it. I don't need him. He has taught me all the tricks. I have perfected the art. Here are the results. That would be my greatest temptation. So I'm always praying, Lord, help me endure to the end that I may be saved. Now that you are in Christ, I want you to remember that. And I would want you to listen to this message. Lately, every message I'm preaching to you, I would want you to take it serious. Because I can tell there's a place we are going to. And these messages will be your salvation. Paul, Moses told, God told Moses, tell them to write this as a memorial and recite it in the hearing of Joshua, lest they forget Continuously listen, lest you forget. Lest you do what? First thing you have to endure, my girl. What's your name? Emily. From where? From Rongai. I want you to endure one thing. Do what? Endure what? Temptation. The temptation of feeling like I don't need church. I don't need church. Nisha make it. Pastor Boni says, what a Pastor Boni, Pastor Boni. My shepherd, my shepherd, my shepherd. Shepia, my shepherd, my shepherd. Shepia, my shepherd, my shepherd. Who is shepherd in your salvation? Who is shepherd in your? I want you to remember something. Discipleship is lifelong. You might have the same shepherd. You might have the same shepherd to the end. It's just that he'll be dealing with different things at different phases of your life. Now he's dealing with fornication as the main issue. <laughs> a time will come where he might be dealing with parenting. As the main issue, he'll be telling you you're becoming a bad parent. You're not showing grace to your children. Or you are letting your children lose. You're not raising them as the Lord would want you to raise them. A time will come where we'll be dealing with your marriage. It's a, it's a process. Discipleship is not a program. It is a process. And as you know, processes have different stations. Didn't you? Different stations. Checkpoints. So maybe checkpoint to Konasa in Yakumoldiwa too. It's an easier one. The day you have money and your shepherd tells you, sit down and you sit. Mr. CEO! The day you become a chief operations officer, COO. COO. Will your shepherd tell you, why are you singing badly in the choir? And you say, yes, madam, I'll change. Or you'll say, do you know who I am? 
I'm the regional manager. East Africa region. And maybe the shepherd is your employee. Nani alipata job hata hajaanza. Alafu chacha anakuja anakuambia madam CFO whatever you are doing is not right. In fact how you are handling your employers at work. <laughs> is that how God will want you to? I don't like the way you handle you handle your workers. Stop that nonsense. You should not repeat. Will you say yes shepherd? Or will you say do you know who I am? What will you say? Eh? See you on Monday. Monday na pata memo. Eh? Mind how you talk to your leaders. Ama kuna mnafanya alternation. Huyu anamlemea church, huyu anamlemea kazini. Anasema huda niona. Wewe hapo siwezi ongea. Wacha turudi job. Anakufinya. Ana ku finish number 2 pressure pressure look 1250 pressure look 1250 look 12 <laughs> the bible says but i have a baptism to be baptized with and how i am distressed and how distressed am i till it's accomplished look at that level of pressure that jesus went through my heart is exceedingly sorrowful sorrowful but i have to go through it anything you are calling difficult is what you are not willing to conquer I repeat anything you're calling difficult is what you're not willing but if you're willing to conquer it it's not difficult Jesus said I have a baptism to be baptized how did how distressed am I pressure can you handle the pressure of life you must endure pressure the bible says we are pressed down from all sides but not destroyed We are pressed down from all sides. Christianity, salvation will involve pressure. Pressure from your parents. They want you to backslide and become like them so that you stop condemning them. Some of you might have to wait for a long time before you get a beloved. There will be a pressure to want to get a beloved. Where is our grandson? You might be under pressure of getting a beloved. Some of you. You fasted, you have prayed, you have given offerings, pastor has prophesied, nothing. <laughs> you must endure that pressure. Don't succumb. Don't. Don't. The pressure would be you to go to Kimutu hapo. Satan will even present counterfeits for you. He will give you options. You will say kama umekosa wa kanisa siku na odhiambo hapa. Na odhiambo anafia he fears God. Ni pombe tu kidogo but he fears God. Oh this. Oh this ni msabato. Anakula neno. We are hard pressed on every side. But one assurance we have, we are not crushed. That's the assurance. Because I told you now you are in Christ. So he supplies the work and he supplies the energy, grace. He supplies both. Your pressure is a beloved. Many people will turn away from Jesus because of a beloved. You see everybody in church is getting married. All your friends. Umeenda harusi zote kama hema. Kuna harusi jana. In fact, zigira la umesimamia. Uko na suti ka boutique. 
uko na kala aina yote uko na green uko na indigo uko na fuchsia eh hizo maru hizo makala za harusi uko na burgundy uko na burnt orange yako ilikuwa burgundy cockroach brown mint cream mint green takwas blue hakuna suti hauna mtu wangu Shepard aksema tuvai ikala na Muhammad worry no more cuz you know what Unakumbuka harusi ya magi cha Bantu orange Kana bantu orange Next week Shepard anasema we should dress this mint green unasema worry no more harusi ya wangare cha Hata utafuti za Malbert Uko nazo mtu wangu Samalba ni mfaka ametajirika juu yako. You are under pressure. Jesus says I have a baptism to be baptized. How distressed I am. Hey. How distressed I am. Mshika na wazoda kwa harusi. Kama nyuki. Kuna wao hujashika. Zote zikirushwa Maka sasa hiyo <laughs> upractice una, unazafunga na macho. Nasema one, niambie tu just count una, the only thing you tell them count for me. One, two, three. <laughs> Niko nayo. Because you've done it over 15 times. You know all the tricks. You know all the tricks. Mutu tundi hakuna. Matuma huo umeshi? You are pressed down. You must endure pressure. You must endure the pressure of wanting to become like others. Buddha, the Israelites could not endure pressure of having other nations around them having kings and them not having. They went to God and said, "We want to become like other nations. We want a king. We also want to when we go to war, we want to be saying, "Hail our king." Then before they long live the king, then before when they before they when they, when they went to war, they didn't have a king, they would have had a prophet. So they would go singing because prophet <laughs> prophet wala kama chizi bala imagine me na war mnaimba give me a song sing a song quickly they are going to war which song is that eh eh Yes Lord, yes Lord, yes yes Lord. Yes Lord. And they are going to war. Yes yes Lord. Yes Lord, yes Lord. Yes yes Lord. Amen. My soldier man, you're going to make it for this. Yes Lord. Yes Lord, yes yes Lord. Yes Lord, yes Lord. Yes yes Lord. Yes. And they they are going for war. Yes yes Lord. Amen. I'm trading my sorrows. I'm trading my shame. And they're going to I'm walk. laying them down for the joy of the Lord. Yes, Lord. I'm trading my sickness. They're going to walk. I'm trading my pain. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. Does it, not, does it not look shameful? <laughs> Then <laughs> your opponent starts saying, "How does that begin now? Hour, hour." Adam is here. Do 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 do. What does it do? 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 It looks shameful, right? It looks shameful. Everybody else is coming marching. Hey, left, right. Yeah, something them say. Hey, on your left. On the right, forward, move. They're up, coming marching. Two, three, four, up, two, three, four, up, two, three, four. March, one, two, three, four. There's a song they sing in scouts. 
Yeah, everywhere we go, oh, everywhere we, we go, go oh, people always ask us, people always ask us who we are, who we are, and we always tell them, and we always tell them, we, we are scouts, we are scouts. Listen, listen, even listen to that, listen to that voice you're generating. It looks like you're going to walk. I love to put on our yes, Lord, 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 yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. Who looks serious? Who looks serious? What do I call my Sit down. You must. You must. And your pressure. You must do what? You accomplish many things on behalf of Christ if you can endure pressure. If you can endure pressure. Look at that. He said that you may also be like, like that we may also be like all the nations, that our king may judge us and go out before us and fight our battles. We want to be like other nations. Spartans! <laughs> They say, who? <laughs> like, there's something we used to do when we were in the white church. At, uh, <laughs> congregation of the might, who? That's what we used to say. So if I say congregation of the might, we say, who? Congregation of the might, who? That sounds more like a battle cry. <laughs> Not yes, Lord. What is yes, Lord? <laughs> <laughs> then, to make the matters worse, the priests with the Ark of the Covenant are going ahead. <laughs> with, their, with their artifacts of a priest. Robes. Ah, mtuangu. I can't be serious, Indio. Let's be serious. Alafu, lida wenu, Moses, ako kumulima wenu mkono. Ako kumulima, ako kumulima, ako kumulima wenu mkono. In fact, I'm a choker sasa. Can I get a seat? Let me use this. And let me have two people. I'm a choker, eh? I'm a choker, eh? Hasa ni mkono ameinuliwa. Amegalia jiwe. Huyu ndio commander. Chief commander. Commando general. Alafu hapo mbele let me have a few priests going to war with the ark of the covenant. Carry an ark. I don't know what you will carry. Ah there's an ark here. Yeah, yeah. Then we have seen us behind them. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, 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 yes, Then on this other side, I want a real battalion. People who are marching and coming to fight. So this is the side. No, 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 you stay. Where are you going? Follow my instructions. Wait, I talk, I talk, I talk, I talk, I talk. Where are your side? Let me get someone from that side. Naftali, come. Nice, be their commander because you're in uniform. Be, join them. You're part of the priest. Stand here. Then this, I want two layers. One layer of dancers. Eh? Move back. Start from the back. From the, when you move back. Start from where the tiles are starting. Move back, move back. So you, you, you are coming with those antics of a battalion, full formation. Those ho ya ho ya sawa. Biggie, go and help them. Isaac looks like he knows. Then we have these ones here. Singers. This is Israel. Then this is Moses. His hands became heavy that they took a stone and put it under him. And he sat on it. And Aaron and Hur supported his hands. One on either side. So we are going to war. Sawa. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Among the 
the two looks like they are serious. This looks like a service. But this looks like a war zone. A battalion, right? So they fell under pressure. They said, we don't want to become like... Drama festival. Wala tu zara wigi apala apala po wala apala. Wala pala sura. Shuali tarumbeta. Ukona tarumbeta. Tarumbeta ko wo tarumbe. Na wala kana spear. Wala kana gun. Wo kana tarumbeta. In a music festival. This was look like they are going to war, right? But notwithstanding, even with this formation, they still won. They still won, but they forgot that God made them win. They forgot that God is my banner. God is the one who fights for me. He's the, Jehovah is the one who fights my battles. They forgot that it's him who fights my battle. God was the mighty man of war among them. They forgot he's the mighty man of war among them. And he slew these people on their behalf. But they forgot, they said, because of the pressure of the surrounding nations. They said, we want to become like the surrounding nations. And you accomplish a lot if you can endure pressure for God. The pressure of wanting to be rich. The pressure. You see, everybody around you is getting a car. They are driving a car. They are living in an house house. You also, you, you also feel like, I. They, nice they are eating in nice hotels. Nani yeah? They are wearing designer. Yeah? They are traveling. Where the passport are But you just have one promise. Ask of the nations. And I shall give them as an inheritance. That's the only promise you have. The Lord told you, ask of me of the nations and I will give them to you. There is, an, there, is, there is temptation to fall under that pressure. You are easy, you, it is easy for you to crumble. We are pressed down. But you will accomplish much for Jesus if you can withstand that pressure. If you can withstand that pressure. If you can stand that strain, you will accomplish very much for Jesus. There is pressure if you are a shepherd to lie and exaggerate numbers. Ko group na ngani unawana? Hey, fifteen, ninety-nine. Iyo rasanga. I is it mission or location? Yangu ni twelve. Yangu ni twelve disciples wa Yesu. Unawana muda one season ame multiply four times. Where we more than a struggle. Three seasons, no multiplication. Mako na jwagatu kia na taita sati kretu tambi wa you are cold. You even, you now umejitete umefika place, ata una kitu ya kusema. You are now like a sheep being led to the slaughter, you are just quiet. If they say you are foolish, you say it's true. If they say you are stupid, you say it's true. If they say you are lazy, you say it's true. Because you don't know what to say now. You will accomplish a lot for Jesus if you can withstand that pressure. The pressure of being in failure. Or appearing like you're failing and all others around you are progressing. They are moving forward. The pressure of everybody you graduated with now has a job. People you want to cancel. All of them. They graduated. All of them graduated. You, you've not. Every time you take your project, the lecturer says, oh, yeah. You, the lecturer has even told you, you have to give me sex for you to graduate. No one else has he asked for sex from that cohort except you. It's very easy to say, ah, the sex one attacker, Aishi, Chukua, Si Sabudi, Kwani Meandiku Apa, Apana, Chukua. But what you don't know is you are accomplishing much for Jesus if you can withstand that pressure. You, you even tempted, can I, I, mean, can even, I can even buy that degree. It's pressure. I remember when I finished school, Everybody else, when I cleared high school, everybody else went to university. I was the only one who did not go to university among my cohort. They all went, I, I could see them posting on Facebook, I'm in Nazarene, I'm in this, I'm in this university. Me, Nikotu, Abu. Nikotu. Kenya Nafanya Natafta Buwana. Me, my only university was Harvest Family Church. My university was the Bible. My lecture, there's a bag I have in my study. It's the most precious thing I have. I'm going to put it in the museum one day when we have a museum of our movement. What has given me all this is a bag full of CDs. Summons. Summons. That's all I have. I, I, that's 
That's all I had. A bag full of salmon. I used to walk with it everywhere. Nikikuja kwako unakuwa na DVD tunaweka. I'm serious. Tunaweka tunasikia. Na lazima. Na lazima. Tunasema nasema tunasikiza yangu. Juice na DVD home. We have we had not that radio that used to play a CD at the top. Then sometimes my parents wants to listen. So I'm not able to listen. So when I go to my friends, wake up. Sometimes I would take the radio and sleep with it. Put it there, play. Then I would put the thing on auto, re, auto reverse. Remember that auto reverse thing? And then you would play the whole night. On moment, my mother would come and say, We are not going to Pastor Jimmy. We are not going to do it. We are not going to do it. We are not going to But she did not know that whatever was happening to me was building me in the inside. I had to understand. I would have easily given up. I would have said, Ah. This thing of listening to sermons does not work. I would have caved into that pressure. I'm telling you, everybody, I'm everybody, literally everybody I knew was in the university. Even those who graduated after me. They joined the university before me. Those who finished high school after me. I remember I used to see Munya. He was behind me in school. Now he has finished. He's in the university. Bonia kwa hapo tu. Now me, I can speak in tongues. My university was What was that? Me, I'm doing Bachelor of Science in Information Technology. What is that? I was standing the pressure. I was standing there. I was, in, I was achieving much. I was accomplishing much for Jesus by standing the pressure. Standing the pressure. You are sent to start a church. You see the people you are sent with at the same time. Zao zisha anza kumea. Zao zisha aya wa shanza kuitwa pastor. Wako bado wanakutanga Jose. Jose. Wakutambui bado. Wakutambui. Hata wakuti shepi. Diani ni mavichwa, umuafundisha ona awashiki. Umuwaombea ayeni, ayifani. Wengine mwako wakona departments kwa church zao. Wengine kwa wako departments mekataa kushika. Wengine yo departments. Kila mtu information departments wakona media team, unasikia. Machakos, we have media team, we have this. Na ikono, nukienda, ukienda, ukienda kutembea. Unasipata ziko functional, na ziko na watu. Wafu narudi kwa wako thika. Unapata, hey, hey. I am the only one here. I am the department. There is pressure. It's easy for you to cave in. But Jesus withstood pressure. He says, I have a baptism that I have to go through. A, bapti a painful baptism. And Paul says, we are pressed down. We are pressed down. There is pressure from above. Your leaders are telling you, you are not working. What nonsense is this? That's pressure. You need to buy land. You're not buying land. You should build the church. Your people must have a good place to worship. They must have a good place to do a wedding. I love you. I'm going to give offering. 17 bob. Cash. Bussing offering. Zero. Point zero. This pressure, right? But don't forget something. You are accomplishing something for Jesus by withstanding the pressure. Enduring is an accomplishment. Just as achieving is an accomplishment. Just the fact that you stayed in and you did not quit makes you a winner. There was a law in Israel that David instituted. Those who go to battle and those who remain, the crown or the reward is the same. Those who endure to the end is the same rule. Shall be saved. Not like those who achieve to the end. Those who so the goal is to achieve either by enduring or to accomplish rather, either by enduring or by achieving. And sometimes enduring leads you to accomplishing. In fact, not to accomplishing, enduring leads you to achieving. Enduring leads you to achieving. It's an accomplishment. It's a mystery. Now that you're in Christ, remember Christ achieved or accomplished by enduring. Christ did what? 
The Bible says he went to Jerusalem knowing that some things that have been written in scripture must be accomplished. Some of those things was being spat on, was being beaten, was being crucified. But he knew those are the accomplishments that I'm going for in Jerusalem. The main reason for me going, that's the pressure I have to endure. The pressure of being crucified by your own crea creation. The pressure of knowing I can finish these people. He, in fact, he said, don't you know I can call for a legion of angels? They're at my disposal. He said it. Number three. Take your uh, seat. Thank you. Number three. Betrayal. Remember, enduring is an accomplishment just as much as achieving is an accomplishment. Betrayal. Matthew 26, 21. Oh, will I be able to finish my goodness? Anyway, Kesho ni holiday. See, Kesho ni idufitri. He said, assuredly, I say to you, one of you will betray me. One of you will betray me. He said, assuredly, like verily, verily. Assuredly is an assurance. Now that you're in Christ, you will experience betrayal. Because remember, Christ is an example for us and of us. And Christ came to do what? To make us sons of God. And if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. And that creation is the creation of being a son of God. Being a son of God. Being a son of God. Verily, I, you, sh you shall be betrayed. You will raise somebody and one day they decide to betray you. They walk away. They will say, this man is a very bad leader. His work is just to make money. Pesa yake, pesa ni yake yote. That is a person you've paid their flight before. You've fed them. You've given them stipend. You've visited them in hospital. Even if you didn't give them money, you gave them your life. All they know, you've taught them. All they have become is because of your preaching. They are the mark of your apostleship. But Satan has entered them to betray you. Because the Bible says, and Satan entered Judas. Satan has entered them. It's betrayal. I am sure Peter was saying, Uyumutu wezi saidika. Uyumutu awezi. Unana pale garisa mene? Nilitua kisu ni ikate mutu. Amekuja kumishika. Tutishie watu. Akanyiripiu kumelea watu. Na akachukua masikio akamrudisha. Huyu hazi saidika. He is so he so he is so full of himself. I was even trying to save him. I did my best to save him. Huyu hazi saidika huyo. Ah, aende. He 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 wants everything to go his way. He's about it is about his happiness. His joy. Have someone ever told you that it's just about making you happy? It's about you, eh? Your feelings are the only ones that matter. Your opinions, just about your opinions. It's part of what you have to endure. I don't know you have to endure. They will say, you've sacrificed your life all these years. Then they say, you are in this thing for money. 17 Bob. They will not see the years of 17 Bob. Now you, maybe you're in the ministry for 20 years. Now at least the people used to give 17 Bob are now giving $17,000. <laughs> but people will not see the 17 Bob. They will not see the 20 years you gave. They will see the $17,000. They will not see the money you give. We bought this sound. My wife was given money as her inheritance. And she gave it to the church. She gave all her inheritance. She has no inheritance. What she was given when her father died as her inheritance, she gave it all out. 
What she would have used to buy her. By now she would be having a car. What she would have spent to buy her own car, she gave it to the church. But do people know that? So what do they say? Pastor is after money. Pastor wants money. Part of the money we pay for land, I give personally. I give my money. But do they know that? No. They say, Pastor, you are after money. You don't even know how we built our first building. You don't know the days of eating ugali every day and skuma. Now you see these leaders flying out of the country, going to this place and this place. You see, you see, can you say that hunger to pastor now leaders? Because you only could fly. Since you're not number thank you. Take care of the roads, eh? The roads are dangerous. You guys are coming by road, eh? Drive safe. Drive safe. Just, just watch out the, your vehicles. The, the vehicles are a little bit tricky as we are going by air. Blessed people, blessed people. You forget that those leaders, it is because of them that you have this movement. It's because of them. It's because of these leaders that you have this movement. If they never believed in me, would you, would you be here? It's because they believed. They believed in the vision. Yes. They were there that night when we were praying in the, in, the, in the... Do you remember that night at the office? In the night. And the Lord spoke to me, told me, this thing you are starting, it is like a mustard seed. The beginning is small, but it shall be a mighty tree. They were there when I told them that, and they believed. When I'm telling them it shall be a mighty tree, we were seven or nine. 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 And they are there. My, she, she was not even my wife yet. She was my beloved. She was believing. She said yes to a man who she knew is like he has taken a journey of self-destruction. Now you see that years have gone by and because of what she did, because I'm not an unrighteous man, I've not forgotten. I say, because of what she did, for me, let me reward her goodness. I buy her Mercedes. You say, Sinana Wambia. Sinana Wambia. Sinana Wambia. Ndege moja kubwa tunaenda Brussels. Tunaenda Brussels. Tuko kwa ndege moja kubwa hii mwezi tuko Brussels. Tumeshuka Brussels tunaenda. Unasema unaona? Niliwaambia. But you don't remember where this thing has come from. You actually don't know. You don't know. You, you you've come when everything is rosy. They come when the church has tiles. Now you guys are on clubs, yeah? They come when we have done a wedding, we are, they are doing a wedding in a magnificent cathedral. When we built it for them, they don't know the sweat we've gone through, me and you. The contributions we've made. Every quarter we are giving something to pay for that land. They don't know. We have been paying for land. Then they come when we've bought the land, we have built for them, and they come and say, the people of this church, these shepherds, as the only Christian blessing offering, Foolish shepherds. Na kunona. Kazi ma shepherd wika nisa ni kunona. Na kudansa po kwa tiles. Ma shepi wika nisa wanapenda kushiti. Wasi juka manini. Ah. You've forgotten. You have forgotten. Okay, you've not even forgotten. You don't even know. You don't know. You don't know. You are just assuming things have come. Now, because of those foolish assumptions, you are betraying. You are not betraying. You must endure. By the way, do you know, Peter did exactly what Judas did. Mm. Peter did what? He betrayed. Judas did what? All of them betrayed. But one, when he came to his senses, he went back and he said, hey, forgive me, man. Maka, when Jesus was resurrecting, he said, go and tell Peter and my disciples that I'm resurrected. Go and tell Peter and my disciples. Not go and tell my disciples. 
Peter specifically, so that he remembers. I'm the one who has I've said that I have resurrected. So he'll say, ah, if he has said I should be told, it means he has forgiven me. The other one did not. And I want to believe that if Judas would have been alive, Jesus would also have forgiven him. Come on, Because his, his, the Bible says his, his, his masses are new every morning. His masses are new every morning. And as east is from the west, so are, uh, no, as east from west, no, his masses. Have I removed your transgressions from the east? As far as the east, yes. I've removed your transgressions as far as the east is from the west. There's a reason why he says as far as the east from the west. You see, North Pole is a, North, 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 whatever, North Pole is a place, right? Yeah. South, South Pole is a place, right? You can easily tell where North Pole is and where South Pole is. But who can tell where east is and where west is? Who can tell where east begins? Who can tell where east begins and where west begins? That is how you can't tell how far the love of God goes. How far his mercy goes. You can't tell where it starts and where it ends. It is endless. It is endless. It is endless. Now that you are in Christ, you will experience betrayal. But you are going to accomplish through, much through betrayal. Do you know, if Jesus had not been betrayed, he would not have achieved his mission. His mission was only made possible. By being betrayed. It is painful, I agree. Senior. <laughs> but his mission is only made possible. But oh, unto you, if it comes through you. See, I'll It must come. But let it not be through you. It's like you are helping Jesus achieve his ministry by betraying him. <laughs> you are helping him. Number four, you must endure sorrow. Matthew 26, 38. You must endure sorrow. Now that you are in Christ, now that you are in Christ, you are in Christ. If you are in Christ, it means you are a new creation, right? Right? It means you are chosen, right? It means you are redeemed, right? It means you are forgiven, right? It means you are adopted, right? It means you have an inheritance, right? It means you are loved and accepted. Now that you are in Christ and these things are for you and in you, I also want you to know that you will go through sorrow. The Bible says, Thus saith unto them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death. I want to think, if he was using today's language, you would say, I'm very depressed. Because exceeding sorrow is depression. Cindy, I'm going through a lot. <laughs> Pray for me. I'm going through a lot. <laughs> Change the version. Give us a more modern translation. My heart is overwhelmed. Have you heard people telling you I'm overwhelmed? Yeah. Pastor, I'm down. Because why did you not come to church today? I was down. And crushed with grief. It feels as though I am dying. Clinical depression. Because one sign of clinical depression is the sense of hopelessness. Eh? Lack of hope. If you, if you start feeling like you're dying, it means like you're hopeless, right? That's why I was saying you can easily say he was depressed. Wait here with me and stay awake. So even though he was sorrowful, he took his sorrows to pray. Can you see the next verse? Next verse. Jesus went a short, a short way beyond them. He went down with his face on his ground. And he did what? He so how did he manage to go through the sorrow? By prayer. By prayer. You overcome sorrow in prayer. Let me pause and say this. Many of you don't consider prayer as ministry. You consider prayer as something we do before ministry. But prayer is actually ministry. 
Prayer is actual. In fact, ministry is prayer. Now, there are ordinarily two types of tasks that a Christian or a leader, a disciple is involved in. One is what we call maintenance tasks. Task, maintenance tasks is things we do to maintain status quo. Like, for example, wash and go. Cleaning the house. Cooking. Driving. Eh? Dusting the walls. Maintenance tasks. Showering. Having meeting your disciples for uh, debrief. Eh? Those are maintenance things. Then the second types of task is called progressive tasks. Progressive tasks are tasks that help you move things forward. That is progressive tasks. They help you move things. Now, in the ministry, we also have progressive tasks and maintenance tasks. The Bible says in the book of Acts, the apostles asked, shall we stop giving ourselves to the ministry of prayer and the word to serving tables? Shall we stop praying and reading the word to serving tables? Now, the thing about progressive tasks is they don't look like tasks. They look like you are idle, you are lazy. Like today, uh, I was reading through the book of Colossians. So I was, so I was studying. Then I went to pray. Then Cecilia, I think I called her to inquire something about the office. Then she told me today is the time, the day we do the Titus at Great Conference in the office, the meeting we do. So something told me, ah, you, sh you should go for that meeting is that because it's a very important meeting. You should go for that meeting. Then just as I wanted to leave, a voice told me, why are you leaving a progressive task to go and do a maintenance task? Because a maintenance task just helps maintain the status quo. Nothing much is added. It is all that there is you are trying to maintain. But a progressive task adds to what you are supposed to maintain. So what is more important? Prog progressive task or maintenance task? In the ministry, progressive task is what they said. It is not desirable that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Other versions say the ministry of the word and prayer to serve tables. Prayer is a progressive task. It is prayer that advances you. The Bible says the Lord advanced Moses and Aaron. It was the Lord who advanced them. Where did he advance them? In prayer. In prayer. Advancement happens in prayer. Advancement does not happen by the actual doing. No. Advancement happens in prayer. It first happens in the spirit before it happens in the natural. That's why Paul says in Colossians, I think chapter 2, I contend, I contend. Colossians 2, I contend. I contend for some even who have not seen. Colossians 2, hey. For I want you to know what great conflict I have for you and those in Laodicea. For as many as I have not seen my face in the flesh. I am having a conflict. I am fighting for some people. Because the work of a preacher, when I'm, like right now, when I'm, what I am doing is I am fighting. And I am fighting for people who some I have seen, some I have never seen. There are people I am fighting for in Mombasa and they have never seen me. This preaching is a fight. Because anytime a preacher comes to preach, he has come to declare war. He says, I'm contending. So the work of a preacher, the work of a shepherd is to do what? To contend. Where was he contending from? He was not, he was not with them. So where was, where was he contending them? In prayer. In prayer. He was doing part of the contending in prayer. Part of the contending in teaching. Like this letter, was a, he was contending. He continues. You see, even he says he prays for you. Continue. That their hearts may be encouraged. And need together in love, attaining to all riches of all and knowledge of God and the mercy of all. Verse 1. It says, I am praying for you. I am praying for you. That you may be aware. Not verse 1, chapter 1. That you may be aware of what, what the riches you have in Christ. All, the whole of chapter 1 is talking about how he prays for them. That's part of contending. Many of you don't seem to realize that Christianity is 70% prayer. And the word. 70% prayer in the word. 
By the word I mean listening, be the big four. That is what Christianity is. That the big four. That is what Christianity is. You will eliminate many of your temptations if you can do your big four. But some of you, many of us in fact, we think that prayer, reading the Bible, listening to sermons, is just something we do to tick a box. Something we do to tick a box. Look at this. We give thanks to God the Father, Lord Jesus, praying always for you. And in verse 2, it tells, in chapter 2, it tells them, now I'm contending for you. Even though I've never seen some of you. I'm contending by teaching. I'm contending by praying. Prayer is not something we do before ministry. Prayer is the ministry. If you spend, if you have three hours to do ministry, spend two hours in prayer and one hour to do the actual ministry. Do you know why I say that? If you are to choose between doing and praying, choose praying. Because it is in praying that you will know how to do. It is in prayer that you know how to do. You will know what you need 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 to do. But you will know what you need to do. You will visit the ship. But you don't consider prayer that important. That it can, God can even direct you on the ship you should visit. And God redirects you, go and visit this sheep. Then the day you go to visit that sheep, you find that Satan was speaking to him or her to kill herself. You say, ah, 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 ah. You mean I just came at the nick of time? And you, you encourage the person. And they say, Pastor, I'm not going to shepherd, I'm not going to kill myself. I believe that Jesus will see me through. You help them go through their sorrow. To endure through their sorrow. But you don't consider prayer important. So when I'm going to do a visitation, I'm going to visit you. At that time, I'm going to go visit you. I'm going to go to the house. Yeah, that is Samuel. What? Samuel, like, like when he's reminding me, like when, when, when and Satan entered David because he wanted to do evil to Israel and he made David do the census. It was a good thing. But was it the doing of the Lord? Who was influencing that? So some of the visitation you are going could be the influence of Satan. Could be the influence of Satan because you do not take time to pray. Unaenda, unapata police yu area munashikwa. Munashikwa. Unashindo, ah, Lord, I was working for you. It is true, you are working for him, but were you working with him? Yeah, you are working for him, but were you working? Unaenda una visit ship, kume meyos kwa mepanga kutega. Anakuja nakufanya. Kang, 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 kang. Surprise! Now, would you go from Gamacho? No, 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 Oh yeah, some guy from Machakos. He just he was going for visitation. I can end your visitation because I'm sure he had not even prayed to ask the Lord what to do before visitation. He just he thought visitation will go. I want you to know you are wrestling against principalities and powers. Robert says we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Ministry is war. Ministry is being a Christian is war. You are continuously at war. You are in a wrestle match, wrestling match. It's hand to, wrestling match means hand-to-hand -hand combat. The opponent you are fighting, he can see you, but you can't see him. Ana kupiga opondo, pa! Unasikia unamuwa na kichwa, lakini ujuga unamuwa na kichwa. Na juu nao, oh, uombi, umbigi. Because the only time you get to beat him is when you are in prayer. 
When you're praying, when you're speaking in tongues, the Bible says you, you, you speak unto God. You speak mysteries to God. Maybe it's a mysteries in Masodo Meshika. My weapon. My bazooka. We are going to a missile. Pa, 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 pa. When if I a bender. Lakini juu wombi. Uko na weapon, lakini yafanyi nini? How to me? Because you think. <laughs> because you don't consider prayer as ministry. <laughs> so, you don't a coffee with a 5 a.m. prayer club. So, you don't have a coffee. You don't have a coffee. Sambili wado kwa kitanda. Wapigwa kofi huku wa muka 5 a.m. Kumeli kofi ni ubara ya shito. Pa! Kazima. Ukuwa kwa ndoto tu. Na wawu ujui. Wawu na muka satano. 5 a.m. Ashindo. Ashindo kwa nile ya kuna kazi. Kwa nile ni Saturday. Huko logged in badu. Na watu wa nishapa ni. What was your mother's five AM prayer club? What about the logged in? Satan on a two silly. She told you, Kupiganini, or Pondo, coffee, pa, Kalala. From today, I want you to consider that ministry is Christianity. Ministry is. Ah, sorry. Prayer is. And Christianity is prayer. Christianity is? Prayer. Big four your Christianity. You know Christianity. Big four. Repeat after me. Big four your Christianity. Big four your Christianity. You know Christian. Kuomba, kusoma Bible, kusikiza samu, kustadi vitabu. You know Christianity. That is progressive tasks. If you read Colossians, he says the new man you have received grows in your knowledge of Christ. Cruise in the knowledge of Christ. And even the new the scripture you gave us, First Peter what? Second Peter 1, 2. The new man you've received grows in accordance to knowledge, the knowledge you have. So if you don't have knowledge about the new man, you'll be having a new man that is not of help to you. Look at this. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ. So grace is multiplied to you according to what? Sindo, you have my idea. Grace is multiplied to you according to what? Peace is multiplied to you according to what? So if you don't have the knowledge of God, or the measure of the knowledge of Christ you have, is the measure of grace and is the measure of peace you have. I repeat, the measure of the knowledge of God you have in Christ Jesus, or of our Lord Jesus, eh, is the measure of grace and the measure of peace that you have. If you want to increase the measure of grace and the measure of peace, how do you do it? Increase your knowledge of our Lord Jesus. Study the word because the word is Jesus. It's called the word of God. Study the word. Pray. You must try to pray the whole night at least once a month alone. I do it. I, I, it's called watch, pushing back the dawn. The scripture in Psalms. Pushing back the dawn. The whole night praying. The whole night alone. Because you wrestle not against flesh and blood. My good friends, you accomplish much for Jesus by enduring sorrow. You accomplish much for Jesus by enduring? Number what? Number what? Number five, abandonment. Yeah, it's ten. The other ones I can finish them some other time. Because I don't want to rush. Or I just list them for you. Eh? Abandonment. Matthew 26, 74. Matthew 26, 74. Endure abandonment. Then he began to curse and to soya thing. 
I don't know this man. And immediately, the roster crowed. Peter, he had told Jesus the previous verse, no, 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 the previous chapter, Jesus, I will never leave you. Can cheat? Can die. Kalamba down? I will go with you to the cross up to the way to the grave. Jesus told him, bro, before the cock crows, you will, you will abandon me. Now here, he's swearing and cursing. You know what cursing is? Use cursing words. Mother, father. Mother, father. Aki <laughs> Those things you use. Curse words. Shift. Bull shift. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. I don't know what that means, but I hear people say it. I don't know this man. Look at that. Yeah, it's an exclamation mark. But he said to him, Lord, look before he had told him, Lord, I am ready to go with you, both to prison and to death. Sikuachi. I was telling Pastor Cecilia in the office just now. Not many people are able to stay with their, with their pastors or with their disciples or with their shepherds when their shepherds are going through pain. Or when, when they are going through personal trials. Paul had many disciples. Seven, in fact. But he says it is only Timothy, Timothy was not ashamed of his chains. What does that speak of the others? When they saw his chains, they said, Hey, we radical. Who is Mutu? We are radical. No man is in prison. And they left him. They abandoned him. It is part of all the things you have to accomplish for Jesus. Being abandoned. Your family abandoning you. It's part of what you have to accomplish for Jesus. Your beloved abandoning you. Hmm. Your beloved say, hey, you have to go to sana. You have to This relationship can no longer work. Shai ambiwa hivu wangare. Shai ambiwa. It's part of the things you have to accomplish for Jesus. Yeah, it's part of the things you have to accomplish. You have to go through them. It's coming. Are you in Christ? Are you a son of God? Jesus was abandoned. You will also be abandoned. It may not be in a relationship, but you will be abandoned. I wish there was another road. Even me. I wish there was another road. But he came to make us sons. He came to do what? So if he came to make me son, a son, he came to tell me that I have to go through abandonment. One day your boyfriend will tell you, choose between church or me. Someone was told, someone I know. And that person is the one you call the air I breathe. <laughs> My pillar of strength. And he says, you know, when someone tells you to choose between church and me, he's telling you to choose between God and me. Because the church is the body of Christ. It's basically Jesus. He's telling you to choose between Jesus or me. And some people, you see, they have no strength. They choose the person and forsake Jesus. Not knowing that Jesus allowed them to go through that. To accomplish it. To accomplish that for Jesus. Some things we accomplish for Jesus, we accomplish them in abandonment. I don't know why I'm coming to you today, but maybe the Holy Spirit is speaking to you. I don't know this man. This man is full of himself. We tried to save him. He refused. And in fact, I warned him from going to the cross. He called me Satan. Yeah, yeah, I can shout. Satan! Get behind me, Satan. I don't know him. I don't know him. 
Haya hiyo sasa hata tuseme basi mimi ndo makosa na wewe je nimekuja tu kufanyia kusaidia pasta hapa kubeba ak ku demonstrate anakasuka mama toka hapa enda huko wewe je kuwa wewe ungesikia aje wewe 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 uko na kwa side lakini anakufukuta kutoka side anakupeleka ile side sasa ingine ulikuja tu kumsaidia hapa akakwambia don't want slow brains sit down wewe je kuwa wewe sawa mimi sina shida mimi makosa ni yangu lakini wewe valari ingekuwa wewe ungesikia aje Sisi mpya mimi mtu. I don't know that man. Yaani aliniona. Akaona tu shetani. Hata angenyita manki. <laughs> eh? Angenyita kitu akaribia wanadamu. Hata angeachia tu get behind me. Did you really have to call me stupid? Did you really have to call me foolish? So one time someone asked me. Did you really have to call me foolish? You have just said fool. <laughs> because it would mean you are full of something but now you say foolish so no doubt there is no room for you at least think I'm a f- you are full ningesema maybe he's saying i'm full of peace i'm full of love full i'm full of mercy i'm full of lakini you said foolish mbele ya watu songe nita tukando unanijua uko na namba yangu songe nitumia email basi wanaume ni kuongea ningejieleza wanaume ni kuongea ningejieleza anyuliza you normal na kana nimeharibika kichwa have i lost my sense anyuliza ya my normal you using your head i saw a meme today how do you tell someone that they are not thinking properly ati akili yako si mzuri in the corporate world you tell them please take me through your thinking process <laughs> Yeah. Let us identify where the challenge is. So please take me through your thinking process. Hiyo ni kwambe una kichwa mzuri wewe. Hiyo ni kwambe una kichwa mzuri. Nikasema from today that's my new one. Please take me through your thinking process. Let's identify where the problem is. So you can see how did you arrive at this conclusion? Ni kwambia kichwa yako si jinga ni umejaza kwa kichwa jinga ni umejaza kwa kichwa so peter i'm sure you all those things were going through his mind how i tried to save this man in fact even when they came to arrest him i removed my sword i cut i risked my life i would have gone to prison i told him we will go to prison for him but he said ma attack hiyo he said ma nataka cross huyo mtu simujui na mambo yake sitaki and the bible says peter went fishing peter went fishing agarudi biz yes story of shepherding ikae mimi nimeenda he went back fishing agarudi biz akasema yes story shamali tumekafunga sisi tunaendelea tusha finish tumemalo mwisho ni the shepherd Yo kitu stai kusikia bwana. Ati shepard shepard ni yo kitu. Nisikie kwa nyuma. Nikome. Na nimekuwa. Nikome. Nikome. Nikome na unisikize vizuri. Shepard. Usiwai niita. Hiyo nimemalizana na. Yo kesto mefunga ndugu zangu. You have to accomplish some things for Jesus by enduring abandonment. You know the faith the faith of Jesus, the faith of Peter failed him. He went back to fishing. And Jesus had told him Satan has desired of you but I have prayed for you that after you've been restored strengthen others. Your faith your faith may fail at a point but I want you to know even if your faith fails come back to the community come back to the place because Jesus Jesus told him even after you fail come back come come back just get back to your senses and say ah i need to go back you have to accomplish some things through abandonment i know you are in Christ 
But in Christ Kaminika, there are some things you accomplish for him. Not through achieving, but through enduring is much of an accomplishment. Just as achieving is an accomplishment. That is what Jesus came to do. I am done for tonight. I think you can do better than that. Give Jesus a hand clap of him. But he who endures to the end shall be he who endures to the end. Now that you're in Christ, endure the end. Beautiful, get into your pockets and get an offering. Just as you're standing. Get an offering. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Is that really yes, the key? Lord, yes. Everybody give it. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. Yes. I'm trading my sorrows I'm trading my shame I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord I'm trading my sickness I'm trading my pain I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Everybody give it. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. Come and give your offering on the altar. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, 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 Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. I'm trading my sorrows. I'm trading my shame. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading my pain I'm laying them down For the joy of the Lord Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. I'm trading my sorrows. I'm trading my shame. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. You are redeeming your I'm pledge for land. You were able to pay 1.2 million I'm today. Trading. Give Jesus a hand clap offering. Thank you. May the Lord bless you. I'm saying we were able to pay 1.2 million today. Give Jesus a hand clap offering. Thank you. Thank you. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. The Lord, the Lord bless you. Fast fruit. The Lord bless you. Any other offering? One more time, let's give Jesus a hand clap. Offering. Help him. Father.
Father, thank you for enabling us to be able to pay 1.2 million today to us the land. We are grateful for what you are doing through us. Thank you for providing in Jesus' name. I also want to thank you for the offering you've given us. The Bible says we receive it here on earth. Would you please receive it in heaven? In Jesus' name. Amen. Give Jesus a hand clap offering. One more time. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May you arrive home safe. May you be willing to endure and accomplish some things for Christ. May you always remember enduring things is much of an accomplishment. Just as achieving things is an accomplishment. May you endure the hardness that you have to go through while you are in Christ. Endure the sorrow, the abandonment, the betrayal, and everything else that you have to endure for the sake of Christ. For Jesus knew that he was going to Jerusalem to accomplish some things that were written in the scriptures. And when he had accomplished all, and Jesus knowing that he had accomplished all that he needs to accomplish, he said, I thirst. Thank you, Father, for we are going to endure to the end. None of us is going to be lost in the way. You will give us the ability to endure to the end. Because we are in Christ. We are sons of God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Why don't you give Jesus a hand clap? Hey there, what a fantastic time we've had worshiping with you today here at the Greater Love Church. We hope you had a blessed time in the presence of the Lord. Absolutely, Sam. It's been a joy to worship God together. Mm -hmm. A big shout out to our pastor, Pastor Boni Bahati, for the insightful sermon. We trust it resonated with you. And to our wonderful viewers, if you had a blast in today's service, don't forget to hit the subscribe button below and stay connected because we go live every Sunday from 9 a.m. and every Tuesday from 6.30 p.m. Yes, yes. And guess what? Mm. The full someone drops tomorrow on Monday right here at the Greater Love Church channel. And if you can catch it here, no worries. Just join us on Telegram, search TGL Summons, and subscribe for a dose of inspiration. There you will find all our summons. Thanks a million. And thank you for being part of this vibrant community. Your love and dedication mean the world. And of course, you gotta stay connected, stay blessed, stay joyful, and, and stay, stay in active, active faith. faith. And see you soon. Bye. Bye.